Greetings and welcome. In today's video, we're going to be looking at powers and roots of complex numbers. So in a previous video, we talked about uh, how to multiply numbers and uh, multiply complex numbers in polar form. And um, so I'm going to do the same thing here. So when I multiply uh, this number by itself, right, um, I'll be able to use our previously uh, proven property. And what we get when we multiplied these was, according to our property in the previous video, uh, that would be r squared. And when I multiplied all these out, I ended up using um, a square of a binomial pattern as well as a tree identity. But it ends up equaling uh, cosine of theta plus theta. Uh, plus i times sine of theta plus theta. And um, I could then obviously simplify the theta plus theta to just being 2 theta. Let's see, I don't want to forget my parentheses here. Um, and I just want to point out that if this was cubed, well, then the, I would have multiplied by another set of it, right? And I would have had an r cubed here, and it would have been cosine of theta plus theta plus theta, and sine of theta plus theta plus theta, or, right, cosine of 3 theta and sine of 3 theta. So, um, it turns out, this is called uh, de Moivre's theorem, de Moivre, all right? I'll probably end up calling it de Moivre's intentionally. Um, I like that better but he's some French dude, uh, and he figured out uh, this particular formula, all right? Um, and we'll be able to use this as a means of uh, raising complex numbers in polar form to a power. So let's actually do an example of this then. So let's find uh, 2 plus 2 square roots of 3 times i all to the 6th power. So here's a complex number in rectangular form. So uh, first, let's figure out how to write this in polar form quickly. Uh, so I have that a is 2, and b is the 2 square roots of 3. Uh, so to get this into polar form, I will have r is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. So r is equal to the square root of 2 squared plus 2 square roots of 3 all squared, or square root of 4 plus 4 times 3, uh, that's going to be square root of 16, right, which is 4. So there's our r value. And then to find our theta, uh, I'll use the formula uh, that tan of theta is equal to b over a. And I should uh, take into consideration uh, which quadrant I'm in. So uh, tan theta, in this case, is 2 roots of 3 all over 2. <coughs> and I could solve this by tan inversing both sides, as I refer to as tan versing. Still having to take into account what quadrant I'm in. Now, both of these were positive for the values of a and b. So I'm in quadrant 1. So uh, I, I shouldn't have to do any additional work in figuring out whether or not this is a reference angle. Uh, so theta is going to equal, uh, well, let's see, actually it looks like the 2's cancel out. So uh, when is tangent the square root of 3? I believe that occurs at 60 degrees, right? Or if I want to work in radians, um, theta is, let's see, 60 degrees pi over 3. Right? So um, now I can write this in polar form. So uh, the original number in polar form would be 4 times uh, cosine pi over 3 plus i times sine of pi over 3. Right, so there's the number in polar form. And now what am I doing with it? I'm raising it all to the sixth, all right, is what we're doing. So all I've done so far is just convert from rectangular to polar. All right, nothing fancy. And uh, according to de Moivre's theorem, uh, I'm just going to 
this will look as though it's distribution. Um, technically, I'm distributing here and here. And when I distribute here, I'm actually going to multiply both of the thetas here by 6 is what will end up happening. So um, it kind of looks like distribution, but just be careful. That's kind of a loose interpretation of what's happening. All right, It's not quite what's going on. Uh, so <coughs> I'll end up having 4 to the 6th power times uh, cosine of 6 pi over 3, or 6 times pi over 3. I guess I'll write it out that way. 6 times pi over 3 plus i times sine of 6 times pi over 3. Right? Because uh, I multiply each of the thetas by n and r to the n as well. Right? So now we can simplify this. Uh, so 4 to the 6th is 4096. Let's see. Equals, equals, equals. Um, cosine of 6 pi over 3, well, uh, 3 goes into 3 once, into 6 twice, so that's cosine of 2 pi. Same as cosine of 0, and at 0, I believe cosine is 1. And sine of 2 pi, right, similarly that reduces. So that's 2 pi, uh, and sine at 2 pi is 0. Uh, so 0 times i is 0, and this will end up equaling just 4096 uh, plus 0i if I want it, or just 4096. Um, so it turns out in this case, uh, it's equal to a real number, uh, which we've, we've seen that before, the fact that... Um, operations on the complex numbers are not closed, where I'm not necessarily expecting it to give me some other uh, imaginary type number. Um, it turns out that this also works, um, that the values of n are not limited to positive integers, they also work with negatives, and they also work with fractions. So you, uh, this is true for any rational number n. Um, so let's actually see if I can do a quick example of uh, what is the cubed root of 8i. All right. So, um, so currently, I'm, I can rewrite this as a pow power using right, one of our properties from a while back. I can write that as 8i to the 1 third power. Right, the index of a radicand, or sorry, radical, becomes the denominator of an exponent. And 8i, I uh, could think of that as 0 plus 8i if I really want to, for a rectangular form there. Right, something like that. Um, so uh, my a is 0, my b is 8, right? Um, so I could figure out my value of r by doing the square root of 0 squared plus 8 squared. Uh, R is just going to equal 8 for us. And I could figure out the value of uh, theta. Well, I know that, um, let's see, oh, I'm undoing too much stuff here. Tan theta will equal uh, B over A. Actually, that's going to be undefined, isn't it? Oh, wait, aha. But tangent is undefined at some points. Uh, tangent is undefined at pi over 2. So there's kind of a sneaky, tricky problem they're giving us here, but that's okay. Um, so the polar form of this point uh, would be 8 times uh, cosine of pi over 2 plus i times sine of pi over 2. And I'm raising this all to the 1 third power. Right? And uh, so what I'm going to do is use de Moivre's theorem. And I will uh, distribute this 1 third, so to speak, um, to all of these. So 8 to the 1 third uh, times cosine uh, one third times pi over two 
plus i times sine of one third times pi over two. Right, using de Moivre's. Uh, eight to the one third power. It's the cubed root of eight. Uh, it's the principal root, so that's just two. Um, cosine of pi over six is thirty degrees, so that's what root three over two. Um, plus i times sine of pi over six is a half. Um, so I can actually distribute this through and cancel out those two, so I'll get the square root of 3 plus i is my answer. All right, so uh, this is actually going to be the principal uh, root of um, this complex number. It turns out that if I have a cubed root of a complex, I will actually have three separate uh, roots of that. If it was a fifth root, I would have three separate uh, roots of that. And that's where we come to our next situation, um, which I'm not going to derive this property for us. But the p distinct roots, or p distinct pth roots of a complex number uh, can be found the following way. So in the previous example, uh, like I said, we had um, cubed roots, right? So uh, that would have been, there would be three cubed roots of a complex number. If this was fifth roots, like I said, there would be five fifth roots. Um, so the p pth roots of a plus bi can be found by replacing n with 0, 1, 2, all the way up to p minus 1, or 1 less than what your root is, right? So in our case, I would have plugged in 0, 1, and 2 uh, if I wanted to find the other roots, not just the principal one. Um, so plugging those in successively in the following equation, uh, so there's kind of two ways you can look at it. Uh, this one just has uh, de Moivre's applied to it um, right here. So this is actually the version that we'll be using. And I want to point out that uh, when n is 0, then this whole term is 0. So it's just theta over p, theta over p. Um, which is what we had done previously. So 0 will always represent your principal root. Um, and n, adding 2n pi, uh, that's adding um, some number of 360 degrees, right? That's just looping around my circle an extra time, or 2, or 3, um, is what's taking place here. And what this does is uh, it will give us the other pth roots of the problem. And... Um, if I end up plugging a value of n greater than this, so for instance, if I plugged in in my previous example, if I plugged in 4, uh, or let me actually start with 3, that would give me back the one that I would have had at 0. And then if I plugged in 4, it would have given me the one that I had at 1. And if I plugged in 5, and so forth, and it'll actually cycle through. So that's why um, we're only considered uh, considering the p distinct roots, even though I could just keep plugging in more and more, and it will... Uh, but it will keep repeating the same original ones, right? And there's only going to be p many of them. So, uh, I think uh, we'll do this problem. Oh, wrong color. So find the three cubed roots of uh, negative 2 minus 2i. Um, and for sake of time, I'm going to uh, convert this quickly to um, polar form. I'll, I'll, I'm going to cut that out of this. So uh, it turns out in uh, for this, I would have had a equals negative 2, b equals negative 2, and then when I convert it to polar form, I'll get r is equal to 2 roots of 2, and theta is equal to uh, 5 pi over 4. Um, which, when actually you find theta for this particular problem, you'd end up having to deal with a reference angle. Um, we're, we're in the third quadrant for this. Uh, as you can see, since both A and B are negative, right? That would be left 2, down 2, if I was thinking of rectangular form for this. Uh, so the polar form of this would have been uh, 2 roots of 2 times uh, cosine of 5 pi over 4 plus i times 
sine of 5 pi over 4. So here's polar form of our number. All right. Uh, and what am I doing with it? I am taking the cubed root of it. Um, so I guess technically this is what we're thinking of, right? I'm taking the cubed root. And in order to find my three answers, um, not just the principal root, uh, I'm going to have to plug in different values of n uh, from 0 through, um, through 2. And uh, let me just skip uh, or not skip, but oh. <clears throat> let me just write it in this form for us so you can see what this is going to look like. So this will be uh, two roots of two, all to the one third, times uh, cosine of I I'll, I might write this as one over p times I don't know one third times uh, what's that going to be. Oh, wow, I'd, I'd have to do double parentheses that way. Uh, all right, I won't write it that way. I could, though. But it'd be 5 pi over 3 plus 2n pi all over uh, my p value, which is 3, right? Plus i times sine of... Uh, 5 pi over 3 plus 2n pi all over 3. Whew. Lots of parentheses going on here. So I'm going, I'm interested in figuring out uh, for n equal 0, 1, and 2. If this was a fourth root, then I would go, you know, up to 3. If it was a seventh root, I'd go up to 6, right? to find these distinct uh, cube roots of this problem. So, um, let's do this. Uh, so I will have, uh, let's see. Hmm. I'm thinking, um, for sake of time, since this is somewhat redundant work, I'm going to just grab a snapshot of this right here, and we'll just verbally explain it. Because really, this is just PEMDAS going on here. And I think instead of us getting lost in the long process, uh, you'll kind of be able to see the broader um, process instead of getting stuck at all of the intricate details. So, uh, so check this out. So I plug in 0 for n, all right? Uh, so 0 times 2 pi is going to be 0, right? So this is calculating the principal root. Um, and uh, square root of 2, by the way, is a simplified version of this uh, is where that came from. Um, and you just multiply it out and you can get your a and b if you want rectangular form or you can leave it in polar form uh, but here we're wanting rectangular form and then uh, to find the next one we plug in 1 for n so notice instead of uh, 5 pi over 4 it is now um, well, let's see I guess there's quite a bit of simplification going on with fractions here adding 2 pi would be the same as adding 8 pi over 4, so 5 pi over 4 plus 8 pi over 4 is 13 pi over 4. And then dividing that by 3 is the same as multiplying the denominator by 3, so the 4 times 3 became 12. So a little bit of fraction work took place there, but like I said, it's really all just PEMDAS we're doing here. Uh, and then calculating this out, you get uh, negative 1.37, negative 0.37. Uh, actually, you would have to be careful of 13 pi over 12, that's a third quadrant angle, so that's why this is negative. And uh, sine is also negative in the third quadrant. So I wouldn't recommend just plugging that into a calculator because uh, your calculator will lie to you sometimes. Or if you're not communicating to it in a language that it understands, uh, you will misinterpret what the calculator is telling you. Um, and then the last one is when you plug in 2, 
and uh, we end up getting uh, 21 pi over 12. This actually reduces um, to 7 pi over 4, right? And uh, this one, oddly enough, 7 pi over 4, uh, what quadrant is that? And that's fourth quadrant. So cosine is positive, sine is negative, which is what we get. And uh, the reference angle for 7 pi over 4 is um, pi over 4, or root 2 over 2. Uh, but you also could represent that, well, yeah, root 2 over 2 times root 2, right, is 2 over 2, which is 1. So that does work out. So I just wanted to explain kind of why this one didn't have decimals. It just worked out quite nicely. Um, so, yeah, so uh, we end up finding um, our three... Uh, roots for this problem, the, the three cubed roots of this complex number in polar form. Um, <coughs> so, uh, and then real quick, uh, I'm not going to have you do these sorts of problems, but uh, you can solve certain um, types of quadratics, or not quadratics, polynomial equations. Um, if I was to solve this equation, since there's no terms uh, less than x to the fifth besides the constant, I would uh, set it, you know, basically bring the constant to the other side, fifth root both sides, and I'd be interested in the fifth roots of 32. But it turns out I can represent those fifth roots I as uh, complex numbers in which the b is zero, right? So the imaginary part is zero. Uh, you could write that in polar form, and you could find the five fifth roots of that. And what I want to point out that here is that one of them is real and four of them are imaginary. And if you recall two courses ago, we had the fundamental theorem of algebra that said that the number of roots uh, that a polynomial equation has is equal to the degree that it has. And in this case, this one has one real root and four imaginary. One plus four, notice, is five. So you can actually find those four imaginary roots here um, this way, uh, which is kind of interesting, being able to use uh, a variation of de Moivre's theorem, or de Moivre's theorem, and uh, being able to work with this uh, is kind of interesting. And then, um, interesting little fact, if you graph all of your roots, uh, I just want to point out that the real number two is strictly just on the real axis. Notice it didn't go up or down, so there's no imaginary part for two. But if I plotted all of the points, they'll actually be cyclical in nature and show up at an even distribution kind of around the circle. Um, and that is true for all uh, problems of this type. So kind of a really, uh, really kind of interesting case, and there's all sorts of weird math related to this. Um, being able to solve equations and the imaginary roots is valuable um, in, I guess, fluid dynamics as well as electrical engineering and things like that. Um, so there are some real-world benefits to this, but, uh, but yeah, so interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. So thank you for watching the video. Uh, the only two concepts I'm interested in you knowing are how to raise a complex number to a power and how to uh, take a root of a complex number. All right, so the rest of this was just bonus. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.